A transformer is a device that will change voltages and currents. If I have a, a coil of wire on one side and I have another coil of wire right next to it, and depending on the wi winding relationship, let's say I have 10 coils on one side and 100 coils on the other side, and I have perfect connectivity, which is not going to happen, but just to say for the point of argument, if I put 10 volts on the side that has a winding of 10, I will have 100 volts on the side of the winding of 100. So I've increased my AC voltage from 10 to 100. That's what a transformer does. Now, conversely, since power has to be a constant, if I have 10 volts and 10 amps on this side, when I go to the side with 100, I have 100 volts and 1 amp. So it's a constant constant power ratio, but the voltage is going up on one side while the current's going down, so you can change your voltages this way. That's what transformers are for. That's a step-up transformer. That's a step -up transformer. Now, how does that relate to regulated and unregulated power supplies? Pardon? How, how does that step-up transformer relate to regulated and unregulated power supplies, you know, when you okay. turn it on and it takes time to... We're going to get back. to that in a little bit, but I want to answer your question anyway. Okay. Um, a transformer is the beginning of a power supply. A transformer is what allows you, let's say I want to run a 12 volt, um, uh, let's say I want to run a, a 12 volt computer from 110 volts AC. First I have to take the 110 volt and convert it down to 12. So I have to have a lot of windings on my side coming in from the 110 volt, 110 volt, less windings on the output. Then I have to take that and then convert it to DC by using a diode. And then I have to filter it by using a capacitor. So I have nice pure DC. Now, what if the power is fluctuating coming from the outside world? Well then, which it does, which it has want to do, then I can put a semiconductor device on the output called a regulator. And it's a device that says, if the voltage goes higher, I bring my resistance up so that it goes back down. If the voltage goes lower, I change my characteristic so it goes back up. So whatever the chosen voltage is, the regulator maintains it within limits. That's the answer. Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> And so that's the, we, we, that's the transformer. And sometimes they have these two lines in the middle, iron core. That just used for coupling. Couples uh, magnetic fields better. Relay, it's a coil that attracts a contactor to close the circuit. That's all it is. And since we're talking about relays, I wanted to talk about one of the first great inventions in electronics, the telegraph. Now they, around... Uh, Samuel Morse, 1832, was the inventor of the first single wire telegraph. There were a bunch of inventors of multi-wire telegraphs. But when you're running a signal maybe 100, 200 miles, having one wire is a whole lot easier than having 12 or two. And so he invented this. And the story about Morse, see, Morse didn't want to invent anything. He sort of dabbled with electricity. He was curious about electricity. He was a famous painter. He loved to paint pictures. As a matter of fact, he was hired to paint in Washington or wherever. He was a high-paid painter. He painted, and you'll go to the National Gallery, you'll see his pictures. His, pictures, his paintings are worth a lot of money now. He was in, I think, Washington, and he lived in somewhere outside of New York, and he was painting this thing, this, this uh, picture in the house in Washington, and his wife got sick all of a sudden. And they sent someone on horseback to tell him, your wife is very sick, come home. Well, by the time he got the message and went home, they'd already buried his wife. So he was just heartbroken over having his wife not even, not even being there when she had died. He wanted to be there when she was passing on at least. He got there, they'd buried her. So all of a sudden his emphasis had shifted. He, he shifted to the point where 
I want to invent something where something happens like this again that someone will know if something happened and they'll get instant information. So he started working on the telegraph system. And in the basic telegraph system, we have one wire connecting. This is New York in this instance. This is Boston. Okay? And we have a ground, earth ground in New York and an earth ground in Boston. Now, what do they mean by earth ground? In these early days, they would take a, dig a great big pit. They would fill it up with uh, copper oxide, some sort of conductor, put a big old spike way down in the ground, and you had real good connectivity to the earth. So you have to have a closed loop for current flow. So in this case, <coughs> the earth itself was one wire, and the wire going through the telegraph lines was another wire. So we'd have a, a battery here and a battery here. When this was pressed, then current would flow from here through the earth ground, back up through here. This had a close to receive switch here. Then this, the current would flow through this, this coil, through there, through that coil, and back that way. When the current flowed through those two coils, it would close this connection here and close this connection here. Here's two more batteries, and these were called sounders. <clears throat> and the sounders had a purpose of making a loud click because these weren't loud enough. So these made a loud clicking sound, and so they came up with the Morse code. They could send that, and people at a remote location could get an instant message. And that's the history on that. Any questions on this? Okay. Now, following that <clears throat> was Alexander Graham Bell, telephone, and 1884. And he invented the first practical telephone. Edison later improved it. What happens? Let's talk about sound. Here's a microphone and here's a speaker. Now let's talk about the difference. I have a microphone here. Now, this microphone has a pickup element. Sound is compression and rarefications of air molecules. That means when I'm talking or when I make a sound, that that sound is causing a wave to flow through the air. And when it hits your eardrum, it causes the eardrum to move in and out. Your mind interprets that as a sound. Compressions and rarefications of air molecules. The microphone takes those compressions and rarefications. The compression is when all the air, air molecules are close together. A rarefication is when they're pulled apart. And it converts that into an electrical signal. An electrical signal is then transferred to another point, amplified most of the time, and it goes to a speaker. And a speaker is a large paper surface. It has a magnetic coil, and that magnetic coil interacts with a, with a permanent magnet, moving that paper surface in and out. And so when it pushes out, it causes a compression of air molecules. When it pulls in, it causes a rarefication. So it turns the sound that this heard into the sound back in air again. I want to pass that around, even though you're probably real familiar with it. <clears throat> so what does the telephone do? It was an amazing thing to them back then. Again. He just adapted the same thing that uh, Morse did. He used earth ground. And so notice, notice what happens when this circuit, and of course in the telephone there's a, a hook or a switch that would connect this circuit and make it run, but we don't have that in here. These are connected to ground. So electric current flows through here, through here, through the speaker, through the microphone, back through the microphone and back to the speaker into the battery. Now, this is a carbon microphone. A carbon microphone, and Edison made the first carbon microphone by taking that ash or that substance that was on a coal, uh, a, uh, a lamp with a coal, coal oil lamp or a kerosene lamp, and they would have a soot, and they would scrape that off and compress it and make a carbon microphone. <clears throat> and what would happen is, when a compression of air molecules would hit the surface of this piece of paper that was on top of the carbon, it would compress it, making the resistance go down. <clears throat> and then when it got rarefied, 
the carbon got uncompressed, making the resistance go up. And so a change in sound made a change in resistance in a carbon microphone. And so let's say I'm talking into this carbon microphone, and that is causing what he called an undulating waveform. Don't ever hear that anymore. And it would cause a shift in the current flow in that entire circuit. <coughs> and so the, and the, so the signal would come through here, and it would cause that coil to have a change in the magnetic field, causing a change in the position of that paper in that speaker, reproducing the sound that was heard here over here. Conversely, sound hits this microphone, changes the current flow in the whole circuit, sound comes out over here. That's why in a telephone, when you talk in your telephone receiver, you hear yourself because <coughs> it's all one circuit. It's all one closed loop. But it was an amazing thing because one wire, one wire allowed a telephone signal to go from one place to another. Any questions on that? Okay. Thank <laughs> you.